Hello, and welcome to the National Museum of the United States Air Force. My name is Christina Douglas, and I am a curator here at the museum. With me is Colonel Susan Richardson, United States Air Force retired. And we're going to share with you our brand new exciting exhibit on women in the Air Force from yesterday and tomorrow. We'll be talking about some of our own connections and experiences with these exhibits and the people in these exhibits. On exhibit here, we have the pilot suits belonging to the first 10 female pilots to graduate from undergraduate pilot training in September of 1977. Although I never got to wear one of these uniforms, I am extremely proud to work for the National Museum of the United States Air Force here in Dayton, Ohio, and help preserve the history of these amazing women. In 1977, I joined Air Force ROTC with the intent of becoming a pilot. And you just saw the uniforms for the first class of ladies. Well, the next class of ladies came from the Air Force Academy. So Air Force ROTC cadets did not get an opportunity to, uh, till later. And so I was just too early to be a pilot, but it's okay. Cause I, uh, as I always said in my career, I got a better job. I got to be an aerospace physiologist, which is an instructor. And I taught crew members about the the physiological hazards of flying and um, all the protective gear. But today, I actually want to show you a lady, talk to you about Captain Susan Strzok. And this is a lady that changed my life and I didn't even know it. In 1971, Captain Strzok was a nurse in Vietnam. When she became pregnant, it was, it was automatic at that time in the Air Force that you were immediately separated. Well, she protested and it actually went clear to the Supreme Court where Ruth Bader Ginsburg defended uh, Captain Strzok's uh, ability to stay in the Air Force, although she was pregnant. Just 10 years after that is when I was pregnant with my first child. And of course, I stayed in the Air Force wearing that same uniform. Uh, now that was not an easy thing at that time because they hadn't worked out all the procedures yet. And I only got four weeks off after my pregnancy. And they define that as from the day you walked out of the hospital to the day you put your uniform back on was four weeks total. Fortunately, by the time I had my second child, they had extended that to six weeks. And that was much more reasonable in my opinion that uh, I was nervous though, because I told you I was an instructor and a lot of the students were in my class were, were veteran combat pilots. And it was a tough crowd. And I thought, you know, I'm a woman, now I'm a pregnant woman. How am I gonna have credibility with these guys? But it, they were extremely professional, that it was not a problem at all. They understood that these were important courses. These could be life-saving courses. And so, as long as I could do my job, there was no problem. Our new exhibit is a comprehensive overview of all of the amazing things that women have done throughout the history of the United States Air Force. There are many sections that discuss policy changes, shifting attitudes, and the many different ways women have made their mark on the United States Air Force, including leadership. I'm going to talk to you about our very first female uh, four-star general. She has local ties, Janet uh, Wolfenberger, and she uh, went to uh, Beaver Creek High School just a few miles from here. She's an engineer and went, was in the class, the very first class of women at the Air Force Academy. She'll serve in program offices here at Wright Pat and responsible for many of our modern uh, weapon systems, uh, the C-17, the B-2, the F-22, and she will go on to be commander of Air Force Material Command, a four-star general, our very first lady four-star general. Another lady I want to point out is that very significant achievements, General uh, Ellen uh, Polakowski. She was has a PhD in uh, chemical engineering, she worked in the program offices here in the Air Force uh, Research Lab, and her job was to ensure that our warfighters had state-of-the-art technology. She also will be promoted to four-star general and be a commander of Air Force Material Command. It has been our pleasure to show you the highlights from the brand new Women in the Air Force exhibit. 
It's just one of the many exhibits you can see here at the world's largest military aviation museum, the National Museum of the United States Air Force. We hope to see you soon.